In this chapter, we have discussed the derivations of the equations to determine the bending strength of different kinds of reinforced concrete beam. This consists of the rectangular beam and the flank beam. The rectangular beam can be in the form of singly or doubly reinforced. And the flame beam is typically singly reinforced. The flame would be helpful in the resisting bending strength of the sections when it is undergoing compression. When the flank section is undergoing tensions, the bamber will be designed as per a rectangular beam. Within the category of simply reinforced flame beam, there are two conditions that the flame beam can exist. The stress block can be within the height of the flame, or it can go beyond the height of the flame into the web. The equations used to determine the amount of reinforcement bar required in the section seems to be quite complicated. However, they are all built on the same basis of calculations, which is based on the stress plot diagram. If you observe this stress plot diagram, you will find that the working principles are basically similar. The stress plot diagram differs slightly, mainly due to the different conditions of the member. The similar items within the stress plot diagram include the design strength of the concrete, the height of the stress plot S, which is equals to 0 0.8 times the positions of the neutral axis. There will be compressive force of the concrete which fall within the centroid of the stress block. There will be forces generated within the tension steel bar. And there will be lever arm between the forces with the positions of the tension steel bar. To determine the moment acting within the sections, it is basically multiplying the forces with the lever arm. The moment can be generated by the concrete alone or can also be generated by the steel bar. Normally, the positions of the neutral axis and the height of the stress block needs to be determined through derivations. The derivations normally are based on two types of equations. First, the equations of static equilibrium on the basis of sigma fx equals to zero, where the summations of all the horizontal force needs to be equals to zero. The second type of equations that you need to use, it will be the equations for the moment, which is typically the forces multiply the lever arm. As for the lever arm, as long as you can draw the stress plot diagram correctly, the equations from the lever arm can be determined graphically by minusing the depth of the beam with some other respective numbers. You do not need to memorize the equations for the lever arms. This brings to my next point, where if you can produce your own stress plot diagram, you can actually derive the equations to determine the bending strength of different kinds of member yourself. Again, you do not need to memorize all the complicated equations. On top of those, there is one more thing that you need to be aware of, which you need to make sure the reinforcement bar actually yield. Especially the tension reinforcement bar, 
you will always need to ensure that it's always you so that the member can behave in the data manner. This can be determined by make sure the X is within 0.45D or 0.617D. 0.45D is the number recommended by Eurocode. For the doubly reinforced beam, the compression steel bar do not necessarily have to be yielded. It may have yield or may not yield. You will need to check whether it yields for you to determine the forces due to the compressive steel bar. This can easily be checked by referring to the ratio d prime per d. The ratio needs to be less than 0.171 so that the compressive steel bar has yielded. Once you know that the compressive steel bar has yielded, the compressive strength of the compression steel will be equal to the design strength of a steel bar. If you realize that the compression steel bar has not yielded, you will need to determine the strength within the compression steel bar based on the strength diagram here in order to determine the equivalent stress within the steel bar for you to determine the forces within the compression steel. This chapter provides you essential basis for you to determine the bending strength of a reinforced concrete beam. This basis and the first principle is essential for your design of the reinforcement bar area of reinforced concrete sections in the following chapters. With that, good luck and happy learning.